Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, the U.S. Supreme Court stops the execution of a man convicted in the stabbing death of a Corpus Christi convenience store worker. We will tell you why. Plus, parts of the areas hit hardest by the remnants of Hurricane Ida are facing yet another flooding threat. If you haven't stepped outside yet this morning, it is pretty much the Goldilocks forecast. It's not too hot, not too cold. It is just right. Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday, September 9th. Thanks for joining us this morning. You're right. When you step outside, it's pretty nice. Not exactly crisp, but it's yeah. a step in the right direction. Yeah. Mike goes to age feeling very comfortable out there this morning. Yep. The humidity went away yesterday afternoon. Despite that, we did hit, um, you know, we hit 100 yesterday, right. but it felt a whole lot better than previous days because that humidity dropped off. So your, your body could actually cool itself kind of efficiently. So that's what we're looking at today. You could almost crack the car windows on the way in this morning. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, because it is so dry out there. So, and it's going to stay this way for the next couple of days. So, we're going to have uh, some clear skies. Beautiful view out there at the airport right now. We are at 72 degrees, so we're just about down to our normal low temperature, 71, uh, 65 Kerrville, 63 Bernie Stage, and these numbers. 50s in parts of the hill country. So of course 60 is that magic number. You get below that. It's really, really comfortable and that's the way it is throughout most of the area right now. And with those, the here's the temperature at 72. Here's the dew point. You can still drop down a little bit more. So I think we're going to be dropping into the upper 60s before it's all said and done here in town. Actually a below normal low temperature. Molds on the moderate side from yesterday's reading. Fall Elm is low. So again, upper 60s here in town. Don't think it's jacket weather, but you can pretend if you want to later on today, though, big, big warm up drier warms up very easily. So we're going to be up to 100 again later on today, kind of breezy out of the uh, northeast. One more day like this exactly tomorrow, still mid 90s on Saturday, still low humidity. Then the humidity comes back in here, but some rain chances starting Sunday. Details in just a couple of minutes. Steph, Mark. Thank you, Mike. San Antonio police are investigating a shooting on the city's south side that started as an argument between neighbors last night. And the shooting happened in the 1700 block of Santa Rita. Police say the argument escalated and one neighbor shot at the other. Police say the other neighbor then went into a home with several other people inside. Officers say they were able to get each person out of that house, including the shooter. Police say the shooter is in custody and there is no threat to that neighborhood. Here is a look at the latest pandemic numbers in Bear County. The seven day average of cases down to 1087. We're also seeing a decline in COVID-19 hospitalizations. 1194 people are being treated as of this morning. Two new COVID related deaths have been confirmed, which pushes us closer to the 4000 mark locally. In Huntsville, a death row inmate has won a reprieve from execution for killing a convenience store worker in Corpus Christi during a robbery back in 2004. Last night, the U.S. Supreme Court blocked the lethal injection of John Henry Ramirez after his attorney argued the state was violating his religious freedom by not letting his pastor lay hands on him at the time of his lethal injection. In its brief order, the court directed its clerk to establish a briefing schedule so Ramirez's case could be argued in October or November. November. Ramirez is condemned for fatally stabbing 46 year old Pablo Castro, who worked at Corpus Christi convenience store. The request by Ramirez is the latest clash between death row inmates and prison officials in Texas over the presence of spiritual advisors in the death chamber. Attorneys for mass murder Dylan Roof are petitioning for a review of his death sentence. Roof was a white nationalist convicted of killing nine people at a historically black church back in 2015. Just yesterday, an appeals court upheld his conviction and death sentence. The same day Roof's public defenders filed a review of that decision. They argued the judges improperly used religion to determine if Roof is a good or bad person. According to the National Hurricane Center, the center of tropical storm Mindy made landfall over St. Vincent Island in Florida last night. Now, sustained winds of over 44 miles per hour recorded at Tyndall Air Force Base with gusts up to 55 miles per hour. Today, Mindy will continue over northern Florida and southern Georgia through the evening and early morning hours, losing energy. So that means more than 12 million people are now facing new flood threats in areas already devastated by the remnants of Hurricane Ida. CNN's John Lawrence has the latest. I can't even believe that we're talking about this, but here goes. A new threat for areas already hard hit by the remnants of Hurricane Ida in the Northeast. We are at risk for some severe storms this evening, which could bring wind gusts and downpours 
into areas that need neither. Millions are facing flash flood watches in New York, Pennsylvania, and New Jersey. The first storm since Ida devastated parts of the Northeast are now forecast to strike Wednesday into Thursday. Obviously, we're concerned about folks who are hit that any new water could be a problem. And we're also concerned that we could see more than is projected. The National Weather Service warning it will not take much rainfall to cause flash flooding of urban, flood prone and other low lying areas. We have very satur saturated grounds in the state right now. So vegetation, trees, foundations, everything is more likely to be easily moved. The storm is also threatening to spawn tornadoes, damaging winds and severe hail from Virginia to Vermont. Please take it safe as these storms progress. If your phone goes off with a flash flood or tornado warning, please take it seriously. I don't ever want to witness what I saw in the streets of New York when we had to deal with the ravages of a cataclysmic flooding event, which happened once, it happened 10 days later, and for all we know, it could happen again 10 days from now. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Helped raise earlier for victims of Hurricane Ida. The total is now up to $14,970. Around 170 calls came into the phone bank last week to help raise the money. We want to thank our viewers for helping out in this effort. The Red Cross also says that on the same day the food phone bank was held, around 6000 additional dollars in donations rolled in as part of the Hurricane Ida relief effort. Thank you, San Antonio and South Texas. Right now, 436, about 72 lovely degrees. And according to the USDA, some bacteria that causes foodborne illness can become a problem in 20 minutes at room temperature. How you can keep your groceries cool while on the way home from the store. It's game day. The Dallas Cowboys getting ready for their season opener tonight in Tampa. We'll tell you about Dak Prescott's big return to the game coming up in morning sports. And taking a look outside with live cam. Feels kind of like fall, but only in the early morning hours. We'll be right back. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. The Dallas Cowboys have officially ruled Zach Martin out of tonight's season opener in Tampa, even after the All-Pro Pro Bowl lineman tested negative for COVID-19 once. Connor McGovern will take his place. Martin tested positive for COVID Saturday, and according to league protocol, must have two consecutive negative tests after five days in order to be taken off the COVID reserve list. On board the Cowboys charter yesterday was star quarterback Dak Prescott, who playing in his first regular season game since he was hurt way back in week five of last year. Wide receiver Michael Gallup was asked how Dak looks in practice. Dak looks like he never left. Uh, in leading the team, uh, leading the offense. Uh, I mean, he's just, you know, he's literally a coach on the field, the same as a player. Um, he does what he's supposed to do. We respect him for it. Um, you know, he's just a general. Uh, he hasn't missed a beat. Those are good signs. Kickoff tonight, 720. Dallas at Tampa, the defending Super Bowl champions. Bad news for the Houston Texans. Head coach David Culley says they'll be out with their start out with their starting kicker, uh, Kai Fairbairn, when they host the Jaguars on Sunday. He missed the Texans' last preseason game with what the team's calling a minor injury. In his place will be Joey Sly, who was just signed to the practice squad on Tuesday. The Valero Alamo Bowl just held their annual Rudy's Barbecue Pigskin Preview. Special guest, former Texas Longhorn, former Chicago Bear, now ESPN studio analyst Sam Acho. One of the first questions he was asked was about UTSA's big upset of Illinois last weekend. People underestimate the value of winning early, the confidence that it can bring and it can breed. And so specifically with UTSA, um, it could in a lot of ways be a sleeper, a sleeper team when you beat teams that are that are rising. People saw Illinois last week and said, man, Illinois could be the next big thing. And all of a sudden UTSA comes in and says, nope, we're here. And so I think they're definitely, it's got all the fixings to be a, a, a top program. Acho was also asked about his alma mater's move to the SEC where the Longhorns and Aggies will renew their rivalry that has been dormant for the past decade. And it depends who you're asking, right? Because for a and they might not say it's important. They've been getting the top recruits. We don't need to play Texas, right? Now, Texas, Texas kind of feels the same way. We've got the most money in the state, the most money in the nation, the university. So it's like we don't need to play a and But I think it's really important for, like, when it comes to, like, rivalries, like people who actually, like, hate each other, just really dislike each other. Those are two schools that, for lack of better terms, can't stand each other. And I think it would be a fun game to play. I don't think a lot of people thought that game would be played ever again, at least when I was here. 
10 years ago and Mac Brown was coaching me and, and no one thought the game would be played again. And, and now it looks like in the next, who knows, two years, five years, who knows how many years that game will be played again. This year's Valero Alamo Bowl will be played Wednesday, December 29th at 8 p.m. Over to baseball now, Missions Baseball, another back and forth night up in Frisco near Dallas. Was not an easy win against the Rough Riders, but Missions walked away with a victory 5-4 with that win. San Antonio is now approved to 53-57 and 57 on the season. Well done, gentlemen. The series continues tonight. Yeah, awesome. Congrats. Time now, 443 and about 72 degrees out there. Still ahead, it doesn't take extreme heat to ruin your food. We have some things to consider when it comes to keeping your food cool in the car while on the way home from the grocery store. And we'll also tell you about some new deals on flights as airlines try to keep people traveling during the fall season. And welcome back. It's about 446 now. Airlines are offering deals on flights to keep people traveling during the fall season. ABC's Gio Benitez has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, airfare alert. Nationwide domestic fares expected to drop 10% in September. International fares already hitting record lows. We are seeing great prices to Europe, um, historically low in fact, and as we approach Thanksgiving, we're expecting prices for European travel to not only be lower than pre-pandemic 2019 airfares, but also lower than 2020 airfares even. Domestic tickets in September expected to average $260 round trip. For those looking to get ahead and book holiday travel, analysts from Travel app hoppers say the best deals are coming soon. We found that the absolute cheapest prices are going to start appearing around mid-September or next week. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll have the tips you need to score the best deals on tickets, plus what experts are saying about car rental costs this fall. With your GMA First Look, I'm Gio Benitez, ABC News, New York. Well, moving on, I was just thinking about this yesterday, Steph. When it comes to loading your groceries into the car, the hot South Texas temperatures can sometimes spoil your food. It's so hot out there. And 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz on how to best keep your groceries fresh. Sonia Fujimura shops for groceries twice a week and goes prepared with an insulated bag to keep her cold stuff cold, certainly long enough to check out and drive home. Your parked car can get pretty hot, even when it's only in the 70s outside. The temperature inside the car can quickly reach 120 degrees, but it doesn't even take extreme heat to ruin your food. According to the USDA, some bacteria that can cause foodborne illness can double in 20 minutes at room temperature. So how can you keep your food fresh and safe? Plan ahead. First, try to shop in the mornings when it's cooler. Insulated bags with cold packs can help. Meat, poultry, and fish are at the highest risk for food poisoning, so don't let them sit in your cart while you shop for a long time. Ask for a bag of ice at the fish counter. Many people go to several grocery stores on a single trip. If you make multiple stops, make your last stop the place where you buy your meat and poultry. That way you minimize the amount of time these foods spend unrefrigerated. For the ride home, let the hot air escape out the windows for 20 seconds and crank up the AC. And of course, when you get home, put the cold sensitive foods away first. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. 448 and one of the best things about this morning so far is that temperature at the bottom of the screen. Yeah, it's actually kind of nice out there, Mike. It's really it? pleasant. Yeah, because the humidity went away yesterday. I mean, how low is the humidity right now? We're at, at a dew point uh, last check of 60, and that's always that that threshold number. You're below yeah. that. It, it's very comfortable. Yesterday, dew points dropped into the low 50s yeah. later on in the afternoon. I got to I got to keep looking this way so it looks right on the screen. Oh, but okay. uh, dew points, I'm staring off in a <laughs> blank studio right now. Dew points dropped into the low 50s, which meant your body could cool itself very efficiently. And actually, in a situation like that, it may have felt a little bit lower than the actual air temperature because your body could cool it that much, uh, that much more efficiently than when there's more humidity out there. Um, all that aside, it just was really nice yesterday, and it's going to be really nice again today. We have uh, some clear skies. I'll couple of clouds here and there. The dew point temperatures and again that's kind of the, the measure of moisture in the atmosphere and you compare that temperature and that's how you get relative humidity. But dew points 
They have dropped down significantly 12 degrees lower than what it was at this time yesterday. 15 lower in uh, Uvalde, 11 degrees lower in New Braunfels. And yeah, the forecast humidity is going to stay very low. So we're low right now. And then as it usually does, it drops down in the afternoon. So we'll be once again down in the 50s, even some 40s for these two points down or up in the hill country, which again means very, very comfortable. But the dry air does heat up quickly, so we will see the big swing in temperatures again. Yesterday, we were down to 72 in the morning, got up to 100. We're going to do that again today. I think we even drop into the upper 60s. Same thing on Friday. But then notice how now we do start off on Saturday with lower humidity. However, notice how the wind flow is going to start to shift around on Saturday out of the southeast. So that's going to start to increase these numbers. More humidity around here on Sunday, and that's going to help out. Well, it's not going to be as cool. It's not going to be as pleasant, but it at least will help out with a few uh, showers and thunderstorms later in the day on Sunday. So yesterday, way off to the northwest is expected. There were a few of those uh, showers and storms that did pop up. And of course, the latest, this was that disturbance we were watching in the Gulf. That became Mindy right at the kind of the 11th hour. They decided to name this thing as a tropical storm, and it's just cutting right across the uh, southeastern portion of the United States. No impact on our weather down here in the Caribbean. There is a disturbance. Now, this is the same one that we've been watching and talking about how this is going to sort of work its way, just sort of hugging the coast of Mexico going into the first part of next week. And this is what is going to help give us a, a couple of showers around here, and that will be again about uh, say starting later in the day on Sunday, but the hurricane center is just kind of keeping an eye on things right now and even over the next five days does not have it developing into anything. 90 mostly sunny skies today at noon and then 100 again. However, and low humidity, so it is going to be comfortable, especially if you're in the shade tomorrow. Same situation Saturday. Basically the same situation. Temperatures will be down a couple of notches then and then the humidity comes on in here and it won't be as comfortable on Sunday. We will have a few more showers, thunderstorms developing, especially later on in the day on Sunday and not constant rain, but an OK chance for uh, some rain first half of next week. Temperatures only in the upper 80s. It's good to see the upper 80s. Yeah. yeah. OK, question. Yes. 100 low humidity, upper 80s, more humidity. What would you rather have? Oh. Mm -hmm. Golly. That's a tough one. Can we get a third option? <laughs> Throw in the rain. I'll take the rain. How about low humidity mid 60s? That's perfect. Thank yeah. you, Mike. <laughs> 452, 72 degrees. And coming up next, a first look at new a new Paul Schrader before it hits theaters and a big honor for actress Jamie Lee Curtis. And let's take a look at your lottery numbers. Pick three, zero, eight, one, Fireball 9. Your daily four numbers, 1797, Fireball 9. Cash 5, 9, 12, 19, 22, 27, and Lotto, Texas 10, 20, 38, 42, 47, 52. And your Powerball numbers 9, 22, 41, 47, 61, Powerball 21, Power Play 2. A big moment for actress Jamie Lee Curtis, plus a new movie from the writer of Taxi Driver and Raging Bull. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. All in. The man who wrote such classic films as Taxi Driver and Raging Bull is back. Paul Schrader wrote and directed The Card Counter, starring Oscar Isaac as a soldier suffering from severe PTSD. Isaac telling me he plays another of what Schrader calls his series of men alone in a room. Taxi Driver, it's First Reform, the American Gigolo. Uh, there, there's these films that are about the pressure of this person in his room. Uh, and and the mystery of what what has happened and letting that unravel. So so yeah, I, I, I got to do that. I got to be a Paul Schrader antihero. The card counter is out tomorrow, only in theaters. An emotional moment for Jamie Lee Curtis getting the Golden Lion Lifetime Achievement Award at the Venice International Film Festival, saying the honor makes her think of her parents, Tony Curtis and Janet Lee. They both came from such humble beginnings. Curtis then introduced the world premiere of her horror sequel, Halloween Kills, which will hit theaters October 15th. Yeah, like I would make this up. Bob Odenkirk back at work, the Better Call Saul star on set in New Mexico after suffering a heart attack in July. He tweeted a pic Wednesday of himself in the makeup chair. No word when we'll get to see the sixth and final season of the Emmy-winning AMC series. And four-time Oscar nominee Michelle Williams with a birthday today. She's 41. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles.
And time now is 457. It's about 72 degrees out there. Still ahead on GMSA, we have a preview of President Biden's new strategy to fight the spread of the Delta variant and increase U.S. COVID-19 vaccinations. And who's that Pokemon? It's Oreo. We're going to tell you when you can get your hands on these brand new limited edition cookies. Steven Cavazos is here. We are tracking traffic problems. If there are any right now, 410 at Austin Highway. There's I-10 at Hebner. Very light traffic right now. We'll check in with him coming up in the next two hours of Good Morning San Antonio. Live from Chase at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, thousands turn out to honor a fallen Marine, one of the 13 U.S. service members killed last month in the bombing at Kabul, Kabul International Airport. President Biden is set to lay out a new six-step strategy to fight the pandemic. I'm ABC's Elizabeth Schulze. The details coming up. And here at home, we are at a comfortable 72 degrees. We'll take it. That humidity is down this morning. And good morning, everybody. It's Thursday the 9th. Thanks for joining us today. Hope you've had a great week so far. And my day started great just by walking outside. Oh, it's very nice out there. Probably even better in the hill country. And Mike says the key factor again is that lower humidity. You know, during the afternoon yesterday, even at noon, we still had some humidity. Temperatures were right around 90, 91 degrees. And then over the course of what, two, three hours, that humidity basically just went away. And so despite the fact that we were up to 100 yesterday, it's sure felt nice, especially if you were in the shade and that's going to be the situation again today. So we are now at 71 degrees down to the normal average low temperature. And I think we're going to continue to drop down because you see the difference between the 71 and the 60. You can't go below that 60, but you can get down to there. We're not going to. We won't have enough time to, but I think we'll still drop down into the uh, upper 60s over the course of the next, uh, say, a couple of hours. 100 for a high temperature today. The dry air does heat up very easily, so temperatures are going to be spiking throughout the day. The aquifer did go up one tenth of a foot in yesterday's reading and the allergens. We've got a moderate amount of mold. Fall elm is on the low side. So we've got really dry air down here at the surface. Then you go upstairs in the atmosphere and notice how everything is coming in here out of the north. We've got this northerly airflow and then this pretty dry air upstairs. So we're going to have a lot of beautiful sunshine again today. Lots. I mean, it's just going to be wall to wall sunshine. We'll have the same carbon copy tomorrow. Then uh, Saturday, for the most part, yeah, maybe not quite as hot. Then the humidity is going to come back in here. So very pleasant this morning. Really going to like it when you uh, open up the, the door like Stephanie was talking about. 100, low humidity, comfortable in the shade. And tomorrow, like I said, same thing. Then Saturday, nice. Sunday, more humid. We will have some rain moving in here later in the day on Sunday. And we'll have a few storms starting off uh, at least the first half of next week. And cool. Relatively speaking, upper 80s for high temperatures. That ain't too bad either. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. Good morning, sir. What's going on? Hey, good morning, Mike. I like the cool forecast, quote unquote. Uh, let's take a look right now. We're seeing some of the same things that we saw yesterday morning. Some construction is happening here off I-10 East at Loop 1604, but uh, two major construction projects that drivers are going to want to be aware of this morning as they hit the roadways. This one and we're talking about this one here off 35 at State Highway 46, which we did talk about yesterday as well. Let's go ahead and bring you to the map. This is up toward New Braunfels. Uh, there is some construction going on there off I-35 northbound at State Highway 46. It is happening south of the Guadalupe River to State Highway 46. At least two lanes are going to be closed and it should be wrapping up Friday, but drivers that are heading up toward Austin are going, going to want to be aware of that construction that's going on out there. Uh, we're going to be watching that closely. We did see some delays yesterday due to this construction, but again, should be wrapping up Friday. Now let's jump right over here though to I-10 eastbound where we are seeing a little bit of a delay right at Loop 1604. Some construction going on right over there this morning. Now, Great Town Road is closed at I-10. However, TxDOT does suggest that traffic can use the frontage road road at the, at the frontage road that is and the file road and the turnaround at loop 1604 to cross I 10. So again, we are seeing that build up in the eastbound lanes of I 10 this morning due to that construction. Now this is going to be ongoing, but we're going to continue to monitor that if you're heading up towards the game. But overall, the morning is still pretty green. We've been spotting a few slowdowns around 410, but nothing too major right now that's going to impact the morning commute. Let's go ahead and check out those inbound times though. 24 minutes coming in from I 10 and Bernie 26 coming in from 281 and Bolverde and we are seeing 
seen 26 on 35 this morning. It's still pretty green from Seguin on those westbound lanes as well. But one last look at Trans Guide 35 North at State Highway 46. We'll be monitoring this closely again. Start planning those alternative routes if you're heading up toward Austin later this morning. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. President Biden will deliver a speech today outlining what the White House says is a new six pronged strategy to combat the pandemic. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze has the latest from Washington. Amid the surge in COVID cases and hospitalizations, President Biden is set to lay out a new six step strategy to fight the dominant Delta variant and boost vaccinations requiring more vaccinations, boosting important testing measures and more, uh, making it safer for kids to go to school all at a time when the American people are listening. The president is expected to pressure more companies to impose vaccine mandates at a time when hospitals are treating more than 100,000 COVID patients, four times the number at this time last year. Most of those patients are unvaccinated. We hit another high mark of 115 patients uh, in our hospital. 40 of those are in critical care and 20 of those are on ventilators. Cases and hospitalizations are leveling out in the hard hit south, but rapidly rising in the Midwest and Northeast. In Kentucky, where there's a record number of COVID patients, hospitals could start rationing care. In Oregon, morgues are once again overwhelmed. We're just putting uh, individuals on, on our recovery gurneys. And as millions of kids head back to the classroom, a record number of children are now infected. One out of every four new cases in the U.S. is in kids. 2,200 children fighting the virus in hospitals. Four-year-old Addison Wishart died from COVID one day after she was diagnosed. You can help by getting yourself vaccinated to protect that child uh, who can't be vaccinated. Los Angeles is poised to be the first major school district in the country that will make vaccines mandatory for students. The L.A. District's Board of Education will vote today on a vaccine mandate in schools. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. Here at home, Gonzalez County Sheriff Robert Incon is set to be laid to rest today after his battle with COVID-19. Visitation is scheduled for noon at the J.B. Wells Expo Center in Gonzalez, Texas. A service will then take place at the center at 2 p.m. Several new COVID variants are now being closely monitored by local researchers and the World Health Organization. Some of the variants being monitored are the Lambda and Mu variants. Good news is researcher Gene Patterson with Texas Biomed Research Institute says no evidence any, that any of them are more dangerous, just more transmissible perhaps. There's no evidence that any of these variants are um, have escaped mutants that would suggest that you wouldn't be protected from your vaccination. Right now, scientists are trying their best to predict when the pandemic might end, but so far they're just guesses uh, that will only only time will prove correct. Also making headlines this morning in Missouri, thousands of people like the streets in St. Louis to honor our fallen hero, Marine Lance Corporal Jared Schmitz, the 20 year old one of 13 U.S. service members killed last month at the bombing in Kabul. Schmitz was a native of St. Charles County, Missouri. The procession to the funeral home was led by hundreds of police motorcycles and first responders. All along the route, people lined the road with American flags to honor the fallen hero. Visitation for Schmitz will be held Saturday. His funeral and burial services will be private. The Transportation Department Inspector General says it is reviewing how officials prevent everyday flights and commercial space flights from sharing the same airspace and potentially colliding. This comes as multiple space flights have launched since 2016 and shortly after the FAA grounded prominent commercial space flight company Virgin Galactic. During a flight in July, the company's space plane flew outside designated FAA airspace for nearly two minutes. The FAA coordinates nearly 43,000 flights daily and manages approximately 5,000 aircraft in the national airspace system at any given time. Just about 509, 72 degrees. And still ahead, details on Twitter's new test feature that will try to better connect people with shared interests. Up next, a mental health expert talks about ways to help process feelings and anxiety leading up to the anniversary of the September 11th attacks. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, a beautiful, nice, cool 72 degrees. We'll take it, uh, but later today, <laughs> watch out for that heat. We'll be right back. As we get closer to the 20th anniversary of the September 11th attacks, many may experience a feeling of sadness, grief, or anxiety. 
However, as Ursula Perry explains, there are some ways to cope. It's one of those defining moments in time uh, that changed the way that we think about the world. 20 years ago, the day America was attacked. As we count down to September 11th, the memories may be overwhelming. It really does hit you harder especially when they're, they're round number or big number anniversaries. It's called the anniversary effect, an increase in distress around a traumatic event. Ken Yeager, the director of the Stress, Trauma and Resilience Program at Ohio State Wexner Medical Center, says this 9-11 anniversary may be even more troubling, especially with the turmoil in Afghanistan. If you're struggling to cope, Yeager says to acknowledge your feelings and talk to someone you trust. All of these are naturally occurring emotions, and rather than trying to avoid them, it's probably more important to name them and to call them out. With 9-11 and in any tragic situation, Yeager says using coping skills can help. Taking a walk, giving yourself time to sit and take a few deep breaths until you work through this, or just actually doing something to commemorate the tragic losses that occurred on that day. And as a new generation is exposed to 9-11, Yeager says, remember to talk to your children. Help them work through any feelings that may come up. That was our Ursula Perry reporting. Time now is 514 and about 72 degrees out there. Still ahead on GMSA, Motorola showing off some brand new over-the-air wireless charging technology. We'll tell you how it works. Also next, Nabisco and Nintendo are teaming up to release some limited edition Pokemon Oreos. Why hide your skin if Dupixin has your moderate to severe eczema or atopic dermatitis under control? Hide our skin, not us. Because Dupixin targets a root cause of eczema, it helps heal your skin from within, keeping you one step ahead of it. And for kids ages six and up, that means clearer skin and noticeably less itch. Hide my skin, not me. By helping to control eczema with Dupixin, you can change how their skin looks and feels. And that's the kind of change you notice. Hide my skin, not me. Don't use if you're allergic to Dupixin. Serious allergic reactions can occur, including anaphylaxis, which is severe. Tell your doctor about new or worsening eye problems, such as eye pain or vision changes or a parasitic infection. If you take asthma medicines, don't change or stop them without talking to your doctor. When you help heal your skin from within, you can show more with less eczema. Talk to your child's eczema specialist about Dupixin, a breakthrough eczema treatment. In today's Tech Bytes, Twitter is testing a new feature called Communities. It's designed to make it easier to connect with people who have shared interests as opposed to all followers. Communities operates much like similar services offered by rivals Facebook and Reddit. The age of over-the-air wireless charging may soon be here. Motorola provided a demo of their second-generation wireless space charging system. It can charge up to four devices simultaneously. The system has a base station that will pause charging when the human body or extreme extremities are detected. Finally, Oreos and Pokemon are teaming up. The game's characters are on those classic chocolate and cream cookies. The limited edition packages hit stores next Monday, and just like the game, some of the Pokemon Oreos will be more difficult to find than others. Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. 18 minutes past the hour. Let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos this Thursday morning. Good morning. Uh, right now, nothing too big on the roadways, just some construction that drivers are going to want to be on the lookout for as they get ready to get this morning started. Uh, we've been talking about this uh, several times. 35 North at State Highway 46 is a shot at Transguide. You can see traffic is moving pretty smoothly out there, but if you spot in the distance some flashing lights, some textile crews obviously are working to improve the roadways out there, but leading to some delays that we've been spotting on the maps. Let's take a look and see what they're looking like right now. Again, that construction happening off I-35 northbound right at State Highway 46 and it is south of Guadalupe River to the State Highway. Uh, however, this should be wrapping up Friday. We know that a lot of folks uh, tend to drive up through New Braunfels going to Austin early in the morning, but uh, keep in mind at least two lanes are going to be closed. We've been spotting the traffic building up and then picking up here as you can see right now moving at 57 miles per hour. So some good news out there and as we take a wider look at the map, it is pretty green. Nothing too major to report right now. No crash 
crashes, stalls that we've detected just yet, but still check those vehicles before you hit the roadway and be sure to take it easy. But mark your calendars as well. This is something that we will continue to talk about at least up into the weekend. Some construction that's going to lead to some lane closures. The closure of the eastbound frontage road right at State Highway 46 intersection and the closure of the upper Balcones Road again on that frontage eastbound lane as well. This is at I-10 happening towards Kendall County. We've been talking about this again several times. It's going to be taking place Sunday, September 12th, and it's going to be ongoing for six weeks. So it's going to be a very long construction process out there. Uh, but again, that should be starting at six in the morning. So mark your calendars for that construction. But right now, just take it easy out there. Looks like we have some more flashing lights arriving out there to 35 North at State Highway 46, and we'll be watching this pretty closely, guys. As we bring in Mike, Mike, inspired by your Case Hat Connect photo, I would say this morning's weather is a walk in the park. Nice. Nice. You know, and I would, I can't tell you last time I was over at Old Pierce Hall Park, but what a beautiful view. I love that with the, the, just the topography out there. That's so pretty. I would have never guessed that. And this would be a great morning to visit. Oh, yes, indeed, because the sunrise is going to look like that, and it's really, really pleasant out there. A lot different than yesterday morning as far as the humidity. That makes all the difference in the world. You are going to love it when you open up the door this morning. We've got a couple of clouds. I mean, very tranquil picture out there looking past the airport. We did hit 100 yesterday, and same thing, Hondo, Uvalde, Pleasanton. Today, now, this computer model in particular uh, is not going quite as hot around here lately computer models haven't been quite up to that but i'm going for 100 again here in town and then the heat index is not really going to be that much of a factor again this is based on the other numbers that that computer model is using however with such dry air it will feel like or maybe even a little bit lower than the actual air temperature because your body again can cool itself so efficiently. It's one of those situations where on a day like this, if you are in a pool, you hop out, water's going to evaporate very quickly, cool you down. So it would actually be chilly if you got out of a pool on an afternoon like today and dew points. Therefore, the humidity it's going to be staying really low for the next couple of days today, tomorrow, Saturday, then all good things are going to come to an end on Sunday. The humidity is definitely going to start to come back. However, that then is going to feed potentially some uh, showers and a couple of thunderstorms around here starting on Sunday. So here's the uh, long range computer model, and this is that broad brush model. And again, there's just nothing the next couple of days. But notice how by even Saturday, some of those showers invade the uh, coastal plain. And then by Sunday, a few of them and again, it's a broad brush, so not raining constantly, but that chance for some rain is going to exist. And even into the first half of the week, it's not quite as uh, aggressive with some of that, but even by the latter part of the week, it wants to bring some more rain chances on in here, which is very, very encouraging, obviously, with the cloud cover and some weak call it fronts. I mean, not like the big, big front we always wait for, but that's going to help to keep temperatures just back down to normal readings or maybe even a little bit below that as we go into next week. Today, 90 at noon. But once again, we're going to be almost at the normal high, average high by noon, and then we get up to 100 sunny skies, but very low humidity, so it will be comfortable in the shade. And same thing tomorrow. Other than a couple of degrees, same thing on Saturday. Humidity comes back on Sunday and those rain chances and normal high right now is 92 and that starts to drop off. So we'll be at or again, maybe even a little bit below normal going into next week and keep your fingers crossed some rain chances. It's encouraging that those uh, that shift in the forecast is still kind of holding true as we get closer to the end of your seven day forecast. Yep, which is nice. It is nice, but at least the hundreds more tolerable with the lower humidity. We yeah, agree. We can handle that 100%. 112 percent as a matter of fact 523 about 72 degrees and next in your morning spotlight Leonardo DiCaprio teams up with Jennifer Lawrence in a new film plus details on a new Iron Maiden video. A first look at Leonardo DiCaprio and Jennifer Lawrence's latest film and Tiffany Haddish is showing off her dramatic side here seen as Rick Damagella with a Hollywood Minute. This will affect the entire planet. I know, but it's like so stressful. Leonardo DiCaprio and Jennifer Lawrence team up to save the world. This is your first look at the two Oscar winning stars in the Netflix comedy Don't Look Up as two astronomers who warn mankind about an asteroid that will destroy Earth. You have to be the strangest poker player I ever met. Oh, you have no idea. Tiffany Haddish is famous for her big personality, but she explains that working on the new drama The Card Counter forced her to flex a new set of acting muscles. I was learning how powerful stillness can be. You know, I'm so used to like 
gotta move a hand, gotta smile, gotta tweak an eye, do something, you know, um, to get your point across. And you don't have to do anything. You can let the words be the power and, and you just be there. Iron Maiden prepares for battle. The legendary metal band released the animated music video for their latest song, Stratego, which follows a warrior's journey through ancient Japan to defeat two powerful evils. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. 527, 72 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, we're going to have the latest on President Biden's new strategy to curb the Delta variant and increase vaccinations. White House says consolidation in beef, pork, and poultry industries raises concerns over pandemic profiteering, how the administration is planning to fix the problem. And do you need a fun, cute little pet in your home? We have one waiting for you, thanks to the San Antonio Humane Society. Ahead on GMSA at 6, our South Texas Crime Story series continues with a Border Patrol agent accused of killing four women. Making headlines this morning, details on President Biden's new plan to double down on stopping the spread of the Delta variant and get more Americans vaccinated. And taking a look outside with live cam, when you step outside, it will be pleasant. Dare I say it feels like fall. It's a, <laughs> it's a step in the right direction for sure. We can all agree on that. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday, September 9th. Thanks for joining us this morning. Well, maybe it's not time to bring out the sweaters and the boots, but at least in the morning, it feels nice. Well, and you'll notice it as soon as you walk out the door. Mike, I almost did a double take. As a matter of fact, there's probably a ring doorbell camera of me kind of going, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it funny how anything that doesn't feel like a steam bath when we walk outside, we're going, oh, it's fall. You know? Well, I didn't quite do that. I didn't want to wake people up. <laughs> no, it was really, really and started yesterday when the humidity dropped off. And so therefore, if you were in the shade, it was kind of pleasant despite the fact, yes, we did hit 100 yesterday. We are at 71 right now. That is the average normal low temperature. And that's the number that really makes all the difference. Yesterday at this time, we had dew points up around, say, 71, 72 or so, which is a fair amount of humidity. Now the air is much, much drier. We've got a wind primarily out of the north, and that's going to remain throughout the day. So keeping the humidity on the low side. Uh, 63 right now in Kerrville. Does that qualify as light jacket weather? Yeah, yes. it does. Yeah. Especially okay. when we've been a light, you know, around okay. 100, okay. 103 in places. All in favor of jackets in Kerrville? Aye. Aye. We'll have to talk to the folks in Kerrville. Anyway, uh, 70 right now, Pleasanton, Hondo, and uh, Beeville. And uh, we've got 90 today at noon, already close to the normal high, which is 92. And then we will hit 100 today. But with the humidity low, it is going to feel much, much more comfortable out there. Same thing tomorrow, pretty much same thing on Saturday. Then we'll start to change, but we bring some uh, rain chances into the picture by later in the weekend, later on Sunday. Details in a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Steve Cavazos, tell us you don't have anything to talk about. Uh, yeah, not really a whole okay. lot. I mean, uh, I was going to say, you don't have a lot to talk about. You've been using yep. the word hot, right? Uh, so, you know, right now we're using the words good for the roads. And right now that's the way they're looking. Let's go ahead and take a look around town. As you can see, 410 at Evers. It does look like it's picking up here a little bit, though, at 281 at Hildebrand. So, again, nothing major. Mike is right. We don't really have a lot to talk about. But things that you are definitely going to want to be on the lookout for is that construction that we've been talking about, especially if you plan on heading up to Seguin. Uh, as you can see right now, that construction we've been talking about is off I. 10 eastbound at loop 1604. Uh, Great Town Road is closed right there at I 10. And as you can see right now, the traffic is building up slowly on I 10 eastbound with it moving at 25 miles per hour this morning. Now traffic can use the frontage road and the file road underpass or loop 1604 to get onto I 10. So just keep that in mind again if you plan on traveling up to Seguin in the next few moments. Right now, this is going to be ongoing and we're going to be monitoring that. But as you can see right there, we are seeing a slowdown this morning. But overall, it's been a pretty green morning, and that's what we like to see on the screens and pretty green from Seguin. Still, if you're traveling from I-10 to the downtown San Antonio area with 29 minutes, 22 on 87 in Lavernia, and we are looking at just 28 minutes coming in from Flotusville. And let's go ahead and bring it back to the rotator one last time with these shots at Transguide. It is shaping up to be a good morning so far. There it is again. The word is good. I promise I'll come back with a thesaurus and use another word for good in the next traffic kick, guys. Fair enough. Thank you very much, Stephen. President Joe Biden getting ready for a big speech at the White House today, revealing a new strategy to combat the coronavirus. CNN's Brett Conway breaks down his six-part plan. 
COVID-19 is still wreaking havoc across the country. President Joe Biden has a six-pillar plan to fight it. A source familiar with the matter shared details of what we can expect today. One, vaccinating the unvaccinated. Right now, a little more than 62% of people 12 and up are fully vaccinated. This part of the plan will reportedly focus on vaccine requirements, including building upon the ones already in place for many federal workers and pressing private businesses to do the same. Two, furthering protection for the vaccinated. That means booster shots. Up to 5.2 million people may be eligible the first week they're expected to be available. U.S. health officials have said they want boosters to be available starting the week of September 20th, but that depends on approval from the FDA and a recommendation from the CDC. Three, a focus on keeping schools open. We know what steps work to reduce risk within schools. Four, increasing testing and requiring masking. Officials say that means expanded access to testing and wading into the heated debate over masking in schools. Five, economic recovery, as the president continues to make the case for his large-scale economic agenda. Six, improving care for those with COVID-19. So far, that's meant helping hospitals inundated with patients. This will be six steps that we'll work to be implementing over the months ahead. I'm Britt Conway reporting. The fraud trial of former Therna CEO Elizabeth Holmes is now officially underway. The blood testing company failed in 2018. All came after a Wall Street Journal report revealed serious flaws in the company's proprietary blood testing technology, leading to regulatory investigations that stopped the testing. Holmes faces a dozen federal fraud and conspiracy charges. She's accused of knowingly misleading investors, patients and doctors about the technology. The trial is expected to last up to 13 weeks. If found guilty, Holmes could spend up to 20 years in federal prison. The U.S. job market is full of opportunities to work, but many companies are having trouble finding people to fill vacancies. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, there was a record-setting 10.9 million jobs available in July. Among the fields with the most openings, healthcare, social assistance, finance, and the service industry. Despite the large number of jobs available, there were only 6.7 million hires in July. Although companies are looking for workers, many potential employees are staying away. Analysts say concerns about the COVID-19 pandemic and childcare availability are among the factors why some people are not applying for jobs. More to come on GMSA right now, 537. If you're planning that dream trip to Hawaii soon, there are some new COVID restrictions you need to be aware of. And next, how the Biden administration plans to take a tougher stance towards meatpacking companies it says are causing sticker shock at grocery stores. And taking a look outside with live cam, I wouldn't say get your sweaters and your boots, at least for now, not in the downtown area, but it's very nice out there with a low humidity. Enjoy. Now to rising prices at the supermarket. Shoppers are paying more for meat. So now the White House is promising to do something about it. ABC's Andrea Fujii has the details. This morning, rising meat prices are prompting the White House to take action. Grocery prices are up nearly 3% in the last year, but beef and pork up more than 10%. I see it every week in the grocery store. You look at prices and you're like almost stunned. At a briefing Wednesday, White House officials took Thanks, aim Jeff. at the big meat companies. It raises a concern about pandemic profiteering, about companies that are driving price increases in a way that um, hurts consumers. They say four companies, JBS, Tyson Foods, Cargill Meat Solutions Corp, and National Beef Packing Company control most of the market. And data shows they've been raising prices during the pandemic while generating big profits. Those companies have seen record or near record profits uh, in the first half of this year. And that has coincided with a period where we've seen disproportionate increase in prices in those segments. Although the companies have faced unprecedented labor and transportation costs due to the pandemic, the agriculture secretary suggests the companies may now be price gouging. Our job is to make sure that that farmer gets a 
a fair price and that the producer, uh, that the gro when I go to the grocery store and I'm in the checkout line, I'm paying a fair price. So to ensure consumers and farmers are treated fairly, the White House says it's moving to strengthen current regulations, expand processing capacity, promote American-made labels. Tyson Foods was the only meat company to respond. It disputes the White House claims and says that market conditions caused by the pandemic and the weather are to blame for the higher prices. Andrea Fujii, ABC News, New York. Back here in San Antonio, 542, about 71 degrees. Up next, we are visiting with our friends at the San Antonio Humane Society about a pet that needs a new home this morning. Okay, it's not fair when you have a puppy like this. Kim's just not, not being nice right now. <laughs> just trying to entice people. Kim's yes. here from the San Antonio Humane Society. Okay, is that the most adorable little thing? Look at little Max. So Max is a hound. Max is a little camera shy, but Max is so sweet and cuddly. Look, just so sweet and cuddly. So Max is a hound, um, about six pounds ish. Yeah. Um, lots of puppy, lots of puppy. You're gonna need lots of chew toys to play with. Um, likes to run around, everything. Yeah, so, he's going to be perfect in is. the backyard with the kids. As yes. I say, tennis ball, everybody's going to sleep well after that. But uh, <laughs> yes. as a puppy and then with a little bit of hound, yes, he's going to be an active dog. Yes, so. lots of energy. Um, He'll be a good morning, walking dog, good jogging partner too. Yes, this morning we are getting him ready and they were playing, um, just having a blast. So definitely lots of puppy, definitely lots of chew toys you're going to need. Um, when you come see us, we have lots of chew toys for you to for you to purchase too. All right, and you can go over there, 4804 Fredericksburg Road, or give them a call at 226-7461, and you yeah. can adopt this little guy or all the other all ones. All the too. other ones, yes. Lots of friends, come and see us. Thank you, Kim. Thank you. In your morning consumer headlines, pilots for American Airlines are set to hit the picket lines. The informational picketing being planned by the pilots union over the next few weeks at several of the airline's major hubs. The pilots protesting their work schedule, fatigue and lack of adequate accommodations. Right now, there's no word on how this will affect flights. If you're unvaccinated and have plans for a Hawaii vacation, you may want to reconsider your vaccination status. Starting September 15th, people who visit Maui and want to dine inside restaurants and bars must show proof of vaccination. The rule does not apply to children 12 and under. Bars and restaurants will also close at 10 p.m. Honolulu has similar restrictions in place. As of September 13th, people need to show proof of vaccination or a negative COVID test to visit restaurants, bars and other businesses. Some tourists have been arrested after lying about their vaccine status while in Hawaii, many for using fake vaccination cards. Now let's go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos at last check at the trans guy cameras. Things looked OK. Adequate. I said we'd come up with a different word. We're going to use the word adequate for now. US 90 at Montgomery. Things are looking pretty fine. We'll throw that word in there too as we're getting the morning started. I 10 at Pro Bank getting a little bit busier as you can see some folks getting their morning started early with us. And right now, the only thing that they need to be on the lookout for is some construction happening right there at I 10 East at Loop 1604 because we do see that construction was leading to some minor delays. And right now it's green with traffic moving at 62 miles per hour. Uh, again, that's I 10 eastbound at Loop 1604. Greytown Road still close at I-10. However, traffic can use that frontage road and the file road underpass or loop 1604 turnaround to get on the I-10. But uh, as you can see right now, it's been a pretty green morning and that's what we'd like to see. So let's take our eyes off the road for just a moment and take a look at these gas prices. According to AAA, they are reporting the average gas price in Bear County as of today is 269 and around the state we're looking at 282 and the national average right now 318. Now let's just checking the AAA website and they are reporting that Hurricane Ida had minimal impact when it comes to that national average and they do expect to see a decrease in the demand as we head into fall. However, drivers can see that national average expected to fluctuate over the next month or so. However, keep in mind 318 is still the same as last month, but 96 cents more than a year ago. So that's quite the jump. We'll continue to watch those gas prices as well as the roads here. Again, one last look at I-10 at Provence and 1604 at Marbach getting a little bit busier, but things are looking pretty fine and dandy. So far, I like that word, dandy. Dandy, mm -hmm. like the picture behind you. <laughs> it's a dandy. Yeah. Yeah, it is. What a cool looking shot. I don't know if those are little raindrops or dewdrops on those uh, those leaves there, but yeah. And then the uh, the ladybug, which is lucky, right? No lucky yes. sign. That's what I've heard. If you have a ladybug, mm -hmm. so thank you very much for the. That'd make a good like just giant painting or something. Um,
Nice morning. It's going to be a beautiful sunrise this morning. We've got just a handful of clouds out there, if that, but otherwise mostly clear skies or very dry air, I should say, aloft in the atmosphere. This is the water vapor imagery, and when you get this really dark shade on there, that's when there's not much moisture aloft in the atmosphere, which is why we're going to have those very vivid blue skies throughout the rest of today. It's going to be, yeah, a fantastic day. It is going to be heating up very, very quickly. You'll probably throughout the morning hours be able to watch the thermometer go up because this dry air heats up very easily. So there, first of all, is Hurricane Larry, which is uh, now almost a direct impact, very close to Bermuda. Obviously, it's packing a punch there. And then, of course, Mindy, that was that disturbance in the Gulf of Mexico, which got going and then right almost at the 11th hour yesterday, they decided to name that storm right before it made land. That's working its way across the deep south and is going to probably uh, reemerge into the Atlantic Ocean. And elsewhere, as you can see, not really a heck of a lot is going on. Uh, another storm over there in the Pacific Ocean. Over here in the Caribbean, there is a disturbance which the Hurricane Center is watching. What that's going to be doing is kind of working its way, sort of hugging the Mexican coast over the next four or five days. Hurricane Center doesn't have it developing into anything, but that's what's going to be working its way in closer to us to give us a chance for some rain starting late Sunday into the about the first half of next week. So as of right now, that high is dominating things. It is keeping us in this northerly flow, so that's helped keep the humidity low, but also it's basically sitting on top of us. It's pushing down in the atmosphere, so that's why we did get up to 100 yesterday. Same thing today, tomorrow mid upper 90s on Saturday, but still low humidity. Then we go into the latter part of the weekend and the overall flow starts to change coming in here off the Gulf. That's going to help with humidity coming back up and the disturbance down there will start to work its way in. We get these little kind of ripples in the atmosphere, if you will. That's going to give us the smaller chance for rain later on Sunday, and then that rain chance will start to improve as that low kind of moves in here a little bit closer by the first portion of next week. And actually, it looks like there may be no oh, rain chances even sticking around into the mid and perhaps even toward the latter part of next week. 90 today at noon, mostly sunny skies. Average normal high temperature is 92, so we're almost at that by noon already. We were at 91 yesterday, as a matter of fact, and then we're going to be getting up to 100 today. The humidity is still going to be low, so not much of a heat index, if at all. It may actually kind of work in reverse, uh, feel a little bit lower than 100 later on this afternoon. Low humidity the next couple of days, hot temperatures, and then the humidity does come back Sunday. So different story, won't be as comfortable, but at least we'll have couple of rain chances here and there and that will move into the middle of next week. That's a trade off. Yep. And those temperatures are about what you'd expect for what are we into mid September already? Yes. Almost about, there. Yeah, the night weekend. Where's time go? What <laughs> very quickly it goes uh, by very fast. A much broader question, Mike. We'll get to it right <laughs> yeah. now. 552 about 71 degrees. And coming up next, a bizarre dancing pickpocket is caught on camera, then caught by police. Here are your lottery numbers this morning. Pick three, uh, 081 Fireball 9. Daily 4, 1797. Also Fireball 9. Cash 5, 9, 12, 19, 22, 27. Lotto, Texas, 10, 20, 38, 42, 47, 52. And your Powerball numbers, 9, 22, 41, 47, 61. Powerball 21, Power Play 2. Good luck. Good Thursday morning to you. Coming up here on GMA, we will talk about the storms that blew through the Northeast and Tropical Storm Mindy, but we have to start with the coronavirus and the latest on the battle. The concerning COVID surge among children as millions head back to the classroom, plus the latest on President Biden's new six-part strategy to tackle the pandemic plan. That and so much more coming up right here on GMA. Watch a smooth criminal put on a bizarre dancing display in order to nab a woman's Rolex watch right off her wrist. The UK's West Midlands police shared video of the incident, which started with the suspect striking up a conversation with a couple, peppering them with high fives as a distraction as he slips the woman's $12,000 Rolex off her wrist. He then breaks into some bizarre fancy footwork before unsuccessfully attempting an encore on the man. He made off with the timepiece, but police say his dancing days are are over. They later caught up with him and shut down his shifty one-man show, taking him into custody. 
Police in Louisiana say a man's attempt to fake a hit and run injury was foiled by none other than a Tesla. The vehicle's backup camera was recording when police say the man pretended to get hit in a gas station parking lot. He filed a hit and run injury report, but police caught up with the driver who showed them footage of the incident. Police say the alleged victim later admitted to staging the accident and was arrested himself. Finally, check out this amazing newly released footage of the now extinct Tasmanian tiger. The footage shared by Australia's National Film and Sound Archive is nearly a century old, shot in 1933 at a zoo in Hobart, and shows the last known Tasmanian tiger in captivity named Benjamin. The footage was put through a painstaking colorization process that took some 200 hours and was released in time to mark National Threatened Species Day in Australia. For Take a Look at This, I'm Jeremy Roth. That is fascinating. Well, we're following the new voting law here in the Lone Star State. While it was signed at law this week, the restrictions on mail-in ballots and the empowerment from poll watchers will not go into effect until December at the earliest. You can hear from the Bear County Elections Administrator and what it all means for us right now on KSAT.com. Still ahead on GMSA, details of a shooting incident in southwest Bear County. Two men allegedly opened fire on Bear County Sheriff's deputies. We'll tell you what we know and trans guide right now. Traffic is starting to build at Interstate 37 and Hackberry. Light traffic on some other roads right now. They're 1604 at Babcock. You are watching GMSA. One more hour to go. It's not saying a whole lot now, but this wall soon will be talking. That message coming in a mural about vaccines. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll have that story. President Biden is set to lay out a new six-step strategy to fight the pandemic. I'm ABC's Elizabeth Schulze. The details coming up. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning, you will notice that lower humidity. Very, very nice. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And that is our main headline this morning. It is beautiful out there. Good morning, everybody. It is Thursday, the 9th of September. Thanks for joining us today. And if you have a chance, uh, step outside right now. I know it's 6 a.m., but it's very nice out there. Oh, it's gorgeous. Mike Osterhage is here with more on noticeably lower humidity. I mean, 71 degrees. That's not bad. We've seems like weeks ago we were right around 80, 81 degrees this time of morning. Let's not talk about that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so this is back down to uh, what is the average, the normal, as we call it, low temperature. And yeah, the drier air moved in yesterday afternoon because even at noon we still had some humidity out there. And then by the afternoon it was like, wow. This is it wasn't bad even to be outside, even though it got up to 100. We're going to be up there again today and a lot of clear sky. I don't think that's the glow. I think it's just glow off the uh, some of the, the street lights and headlights there, not the glow of the sunrise yet, because that's going to be not until about quarter after seven when the uh, the sun finally comes up. But yeah, these dew point temperatures, the measure moisture in the atmosphere. This is how you kind of figure out relative humidity down 15 degrees compared to this time yesterday in Uvalde, down 11 degrees here in town. So much, much drier drier air. It's as we were talking about just really darn nice when you step outside. Mold is moderate. Fall Elm is on the low side and temperatures. I think we continue to drop down even a couple of more notches. I think we'll maybe dip into the upper 60s before the sun comes up and starts to warm things up and then it's going to warm up very quickly over the course of the morning. We'll make it up to 90 at noon. Wind out of the northeast 10 to 20 miles per hour keeps the dry air in place and yep we're going to be topping off at 100 again today so about eight degrees above normal two away from the record yesterday we hit 100. The record was 101, 102 today. The record's 101 tomorrow. We're going to be close to all those all three days. But again, lower humidity. Humidity comes back in late in the weekend, but so do some rain chances. Talk about that in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. What's the latest? Things are looking pretty good so far, Mike. We've been talking about it all morning long, and right now I-10 East at Loop 64. We still have this construction that's going on out there, heading up towards Seguin. You can see that with the bridge work that is taking place. But right now, we'll take a look around town, hop around, see how things are shaping up. 37 at Hackberry, getting a little bit busier now that we are inching closer to that rush hour traffic. But some folks getting their morning started early can't expect too many delays right now. Uh, we saw some of those delays up towards I-10 and 35, where some of that construction was happening. 
lightning. But now let's go ahead and take a closer look into town and our roadways because we do have one stalled vehicle there reported off I-10 eastbound at Vance Jackson Road. So so early enough to where we're not seeing any issues with uh, with regards to this delay. But as always, check those vehicles before you hit the roadways. And if your destination is the Alamo City, well, things are shaping up to be pretty nice from Pleasanton. It's pretty pleasant. 37 on, with 28 minutes right now and coming in from Lytle on 35. We got 16 and 19 on Highway 90 in Casterville at this hour. One last look at Transcut as we take a look around town. Again, that construction off I-10 East at Loop 1604. Plan those alternative routes and we'll be watching the roads closely. But as always, keep your eyes on the road as well. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, two men are in custody accused of shooting at Bear County Sheriff's deputies at all unfolding around three this morning on the southwest side near Highway 90 and Loop 1604. And that's where the sheriff's office says two men open fire at deputies hitting their vehicle. Deputies chased the two suspects, eventually caught up with them and took them into custody. Details are limited at this time, but we do know no one was hurt, and the sheriff's office has scheduled a press conference for 6.30 this morning. Case has a crew on the way. Also new this morning, a local artist getting a shot at displaying her work in a big way, and the goal is to convince everyone else to get their shots. Her mural contains a message about COVID vaccines. It's being installed this morning on a wall in the 700 block of South Brazos. Katrina Weber is there with a live report and Katrina, we understand that Facebook played a big part in this. Well, that's right. Uh, Facebook actually is the one that commissioned this artwork. It's going to be a mural installed on this wall right here. Again, the 700 block of South Brazos. Now, we were told in the news release that this would be taking place between now and 8 this morning. So far, we haven't seen anyone here just yet. But again, it's an installation, which means that the artist likely will not be here painting it on the wall. But that's already been done and will be then put on the wall in panels. And we have a sneak peek of that artwork for you. It's done by local artist named Yoselin Riojas. Uh, Facebook is doing the same thing in select cities all across the country, hiring artists to get the message out and raise awareness about vaccinations for COVID-19. Now, in our case, they also worked with the city of San Antonio and Guadalupe Cultural Arts Center to make this happen. In fact, this is right around the corner from that cultural arts center. And this is a temporary installation, meaning that it will be here for only a limited time. Uh, from what we've been told, this is art that you can see and use. We understand that it will have a QR code that you can use your phone to get more information. When you uh, scan that with your phone, you will be able to be taken to Facebook's uh, COVID, uh, COVID information center where you'll be able to get more information about the illness and how to avoid it. Reporting live on the west side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Speaking of the coronavirus, here's a look at the latest pandemic numbers in Bear County. Seven day average cases down to 1,087. We're seeing a decline in COVID hospitalizations. About 1,194 people are being treated as of this morning. Two new COVID related deaths have been confirmed, which pushes us closer to the 4,000 mark locally. President Biden will deliver a speech today outlining a new six pronged strategy to combat the pandemic. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze has the latest from Washington. Amid the surge in COVID cases and hospitalizations, President Biden is set to lay out a new six step strategy to fight the dominant Delta variant and boost vaccinations requiring more vaccinations, boosting important testing measures and more, uh, making it safer for kids to go to school all at a time when the American people are listening. The president is expected to pressure more companies to impose vaccine mandates at a time when hospitals are treating more than 100,000 COVID patients, four times the number at this time last year. Most of those patients are unvaccinated. We hit another high mark of 115 patients uh, in our hospital. 40 of those are in critical care and 20 of those are on ventilators. Cases and hospitalizations are leveling out in the hard hit south, but rapidly rising in the Midwest and Northeast. In Kentucky, where there's a record number of COVID patients, hospitals could start rationing care. In Oregon, morgues are once again overwhelmed. We're just putting 
uh, individuals on, on our recovery gurneys. And as millions of kids head back to the classroom, a record number of children are now infected. One out of every four new cases in the U.S. is in kids. 2,200 children fighting the virus in hospitals. Four-year-old Addison Wishart died from COVID one day after she was diagnosed. You can help by getting yourself vaccinated to protect that child uh, who can't be vaccinated. Los Angeles is poised to be the first major school district in the country that will make vaccines mandatory for students. The L.A. District's Board of Education will vote today on a vaccine mandate in schools. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. And here at home, San Antonio police are looking into a shooting on the city's south side that started as an argument between neighbors. It happened last night in the 1700 block of Santa Rita. Police say an argument that may have involved a relationship with a family member broke out between two 19-year-old neighbors. That argument escalated and one neighbor shot at the other. Police say the other neighbor went into a home with several other occupants inside. Officers say they were able to get each person out of the house, including the shooter who is now in custody. In Huntsville, a death row inmate has wanted a reprieve from execution for killing a convenience store worker in Corpus Christi during a robbery back in 2004. Last night, the U.S. Supreme Court blocked the lethal injection of Henry, or rather John Henry Ramirez, after his attorney argued the state was violating his religious freedoms by not letting his pastor lay hands on him at the time of his lethal injection. In its brief, the court directed the clerk to establish a briefing schedule so Ramirez's case could be argued in October or November. Attorneys for mass murderer Dylan Roof are petitioning for a review of his death sentence. Roof is convicted of killing nine people at a historically black church in South Carolina back in 2015. Just yesterday, an appeals court upheld his conviction and death sentence. The same day, Roof's public defenders filed for a review of that discussion. They argue the judges improperly used religion to determine if Roof is a good or bad person. Over the Northeast, U.S. people dealing with another threat after Ida. Millions of New Yorkers, Pennsylvanians, and people from New Jersey facing flash flood watches. The rain coming after Ida devastated the region. In the meantime, Louisiana is now reporting a death toll of 26 after 11 additional deaths were discovered in the city of New Orleans. And we have an update on those donations you helped raise for victims of Hurricane Ida. The total now rising to $14,970. Around 170 calls came into the phone bank last week to help raise the money. We want to thank our viewers for helping out in this effort. The Red Cross also noted that on the same day the phone bank was held, around 6000 additional dollars in donations rolled in as part of the Hurricane Ida relief effort. Happening today, Shirts Cibolo Universal City ISD is holding a hiring fair. They're looking to fill a number of positions. Some of those open positions include bus drivers, custodians, substitutes, and paraprofessionals. Walk-in interviews will be available, and some job offers will be made on the spot. It's happening today from 9 to 1 in Shirts in the ballroom of the William Malish Building. That's at 1060 L Bell Road. Right now it is 611, about 71 degrees. And Twitter is trying a new feature it hopes will make the platform more community oriented. We're going to have those details. And just a testimony set to resume today at the trial of Elizabeth Holmes, the former billionaire accused of lying about the blood testing technology at the company Theranos. We will have the very latest. And outside with a live can, it feels like fall, y'all. Well, at least for now, <laughs> we're at 71 degrees and we're very excited about that. You've been waiting to say that, haven't you? Yes, for a very long time. We'll be right back. And welcome back at 615. Testimony is set to resume at the trial of former tech CEO Elizabeth Holmes, the former billionaire accused of lying about her blood testing technology to fleece investors. During opening statements, her lawyers painted a very different picture of Holmes than the villain portrayed by federal prosecutors. ABC's Andrew Dembert has more. Disgraced tech CEO Elizabeth Holmes walked into court for the first day of her trial to decide whether she could spend up to 20 years behind bars. Holmes was at one point the world's youngest self-made billionaire. Her biotech company Theranos soaring in value to $9 billion after it claimed to have developed revolutionary blood testing technology that could allow hundreds of diagnostic tests to be conducted on just one pinprick of blood. 
Holmes becoming a Silicon Valley star. A healthcare pioneer is being compared to visionaries like Bill Gates and Steve Jobs. Earning the praise of the rich and powerful. But prosecutors say the company was built on a lie. Holmes now faces multiple counts of fraud and conspiracy, accused of exaggerating revenue projections and peddling false claims about the technology. In opening statements Wednesday, the prosecution saying Theranos testing could only accomplish a fraction of what was promised, saying the technology was not doing anything that couldn't be done in an ordinary central blood testing laboratory. The defense described Holmes as an ambitious go-getter who simply missed the mark. Her attorney saying failure is not a crime, trying your hardest and coming up short is not a crime. But prosecutors argue Holmes knew the technology didn't work and knowingly deceived investors and the public, saying, quote, out of time and out of money, Elizabeth Holmes decided to lie. This is a case about fraud, about lying and cheating to get money. Money that Holmes allegedly used to fund a lavish lifestyle with luxury travel, vehicles, an expensive home rental, and assistants who would run personal errands and buy luxury goods, including bags, makeup, jewelry, shoes, clothes, all on the company dime. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, New York. Now 17 minutes past the hour. Go ahead and check in with Stephen Cavazos to see how the roads are looking this morning. Yeah, getting a little bit busier here, Mark and Steph. We still have that construction here off I-10 East at Loop 60 to force some bridge work going on out there. But as we take a look around town, we do see a few more vehicles hitting the roadways right now. They're off I-35 at State Highway 46, where some other construction was taking place. But looks like things are moving pretty smoothly so far on the roadways. And as we take a look at our maps right now, do have some uh, stall, though, I'll report off I-10 westbound at Gulebra. We've been seeing some of those stalls popping up and then clearing out. So again, check those vehicles before hitting the roadways. And as we zoom out and take a wider look at the map. Uh, it's pretty green on the screen. We haven't had any issues that would cause any delays at this hour, so really great time to go ahead and head out the door, grab that cup of coffee and get your day started early with us. So let's go ahead and take one last look at the trans guide shots here around town. Loop 410 at Evers definitely picking up there with traffic, but thankfully the issues are very minimal. Mike's got the forecast. What's it looking like? Hot, but <laughs> low humidity and it's really comfortable when you step outside this morning. You are going to be pleasantly surprised. It's kind of refreshing actually you can take a deep breath and not have that humidity just inundate you 67 degrees i think we continue to drop down a few more notches uh this morning we're in the low 70s right now 100 though for a high temperature we did hit that again yesterday but with that lower humidity it was actually kind of comfortable in the shade yesterday and a nice breeze out of the north to northeast i love the caption on this one somebody has some really good photographic equipment to take some pictures of these uh, little glitches on the sun it says yeah how hot is it the sun even is breaking out in a heat rash mm -hmm. and do have to say never ever ever unless you have the proper equipment look at the sun binoculars cameras anything like that so obviously somebody has the right filters there but pretty neat looking picture all right uh speaking of is it is it getting glowy yet of the sunrise no no okay no, just, my imagination. So. just some of the lights out there uh it's going to be a good looking sunrise though 70 right now so we've continued to drop down uh 61 is the current temperature bernie stage same thing up the road in comfort some of the coolest air that we have seen around here Oh gosh, since going back in toward uh, June and here's one of the reasons why we've got clear skies. We've got dry air. Dry air does not hold the heat in very well, but then on the flip side, it heats up very easily. So we've got dew points in the upper 50s, low 60s. That's a whole lot better. Actually, dew points are down about anywhere from say 8, 10, 15 degrees compared to this time yesterday. We did have a few of those showers and storms well off to the northwest yesterday, as expected. Nothing's really in the offing today. There is what was Tropical Storm Mindy. They named it right at the very last minute before it made land. It is a pretty good rain producer there in the southeast United States and may actually kind of jump back out into the water there in the Atlantic Ocean. And then down here in the Caribbean, there's a little bit of a disturbance of hurricane centers watching. This is what's going to work its way in our direction and give us the chance for some rain by late in the weekend. Although hurricane center says right now doesn't look like it's going to develop anything, just something to give us some rain chances by late in the weekend. First part of next week, 90 at noon, mostly sunny skies. That's almost up to the normal high temperature, which is 92 right now. And then we top off at 100, plenty of sunshine, low humidity. So again, kind of comfortable out there. Same thing tomorrow, same thing on Saturday. Humidity will start to work its way back in here, though, especially later in the day on Saturday and more humid Sunday, 
More clouds, rain chances, lower temperatures. Mike, a couple weeks ago, we begged you to contact customer service and the Mother Nature Department. Thank mm -hmm. you yes. for doing so. It they they did They did well, so I'll we, give them like five stars on the you know, customer good. service. Mother well, they like positive Yelp reviews over there at yeah. Mother Nature. <laughs> 621, about 71 degrees. And still ahead, a new way to charge your phone could be on the way. After the break, we're going to tell you about Motorola's space charging. Good morning. More treatment. We're going to try something different today. Oh, so pretty. Dogs bring out the good in us. Pedigree brings out the good in them. Ensure Max Protein with 30 grams of protein. Those who tried me felt more energy in just two weeks. Uh, Here, I'll take that. Ensure Max Protein with 30 grams of protein, one gram of sugar, and now with two new flavors. Twitter's testing a new feature called Communities. It's designed to make it easier to connect with people who have shared interests as opposed to all followers. Communities operates much like similar services offered by rivals Facebook and Reddit. In the age of over-the-air wireless charging may soon be here, Motorola provided a demo of their second-generation wireless space charging system. It can charge up to four devices simultaneously. The system has a base station that will pause charging when the human body or extremities are detected. Interesting. I have to see how much it costs. Oh, yeah, that, <laughs> the price. The big question mark <laughs> about the dollar sign. Right now, 625, about 71 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, the latest on an overnight shooting. Two men accused of shooting at Bear County Sheriff's deputies. Sheriff Javier Salazar is scheduled to provide us with an update. And we'll also get an update from our traffic expert, Stephen Cavazos, looking live right now at I-37 and Pecan Valley. There's 37 at Hackberry. Quite a few more cars on the roads right now. We'll check back in with him and we have your top stories next. Wildlife officials have tried to keep the murder hornet out of the U.S., but they keep coming back. We're going to have the details. Outside with live cam, if you're just now tuning in, walk outside, check the weather because it's delightful, then walk back inside because we have another half hour of news weather and traffic coming up. Good morning, everybody. It's Thursday. That would be the 9th. Thanks for joining us. Good advice. Enjoy this morning. It's really nice out there. And we're starting to see the sun come up. Mike, for oh, a, a, sure. an hour now, you've, you've thought maybe the sun was coming up. This is this is legit happening now. Yeah. Excuse my back. Yeah. OK, there's right the, there. a little bit of a glow there. So but the best the part is, like, other than 71 degrees, is? Low humidity. It's great. Amen. Amen. Just go back to yesterday afternoon when the humidity started to drop down. We still had some by noon, but yeah, it, uh, the air dried out. And so even though it did get up to 100 again yesterday, it was very, very comfortable. And that's the way it is this morning. And yep, there's that almost a little bit of a kind of an orangey look right there. It's going to be a spectacular sunrise this morning and then great all day long. It will heat up quite quickly, though, this dry air. And boy, last time can't even remember last time we saw a dew point of 60 and that means less moisture in the atmosphere so it doesn't hold the heat in as well which I think is the reason why we'll drop down even another degree or two before it's all said and done wind out of the northwest is uh, continuing to keep this dry air pumping in here molds on the moderate side fall elm is low and uh, mostly clear very pleasant this morning it is going to be hot today 100 as well as tomorrow but the low humidity pretty much the same thing on saturday maybe down a few degrees then sunday the humidity is going to start to work its way back in here maybe even late on saturday and rain chances are going to start to work in here late on sunday as well as into the first half of next week and yes i have the word cool on there cooler than what it is now but just back down to roughly normal 
90, give or take, for high temperatures throughout the uh, first portion of next week. So overall, good looking forecast. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, anything big going on? Thanks, Mike. Uh, right now, no. Uh, Loop 410 at San Pedro, just normal commute times right now. You can see US 90 at Montgomery getting a few more folks out on the roadway this morning. If you remember, it was a mess out there as we inched closer to that rush hour traffic due to a crash. But right now, there is no crashes that we can report, which is a good sign, especially if you're heading out to hit the roadways in the next few moments. Taking a look, though, we do have a stall off Loop 410 eastbound at Fredericksburg Road, not causing any issues there, but it's a pretty green morning so far as we zoom out and show you what things are shaping up to look like so far. You can see Loop 410, 1604, pretty quiet start as more people are hitting the roadways. Again, very good sign, and you know, if you're going to be heading to San Antonio, nothing too big to worry about right now. As you can see, these inbound times are looking pretty good and green, except La Verdea. Seeing a minor slowdown there with 24 minutes on 87, so let's go ahead and bring it back to trans guide right now. It has been a quiet morning, had some construction talk about a little bit earlier in the newscast. Thankfully, that has since wrapped up and people are on their way. So just again, be sure to keep your eyes on the road. We're watching things closely here in the traffic lab. Mark Stephanie. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning and our top story. Two men are in custody right now, accused of shooting at Bear County Sheriff's deputies. Katrina Weber is live at the jail visitation center where we are expecting a press conference to start soon. Katrina. Well, that's right. We have seen some of uh, Sheriff Javier Salazar's people arrive and the stage is set for him to take the microphone in just a few minutes. Uh, he is going to give us a briefing on that situation, which started about three o'clock this morning. Let me give you a look at the video from that scene. Well, this was out in a neighborhood in the area of Highway 90 and Loop 1604, just inside 1604. One of the streets involved was T Twin Bear Creek. Now, according to what we were told out there, uh, deputies had been called to that neighborhood for reports of people who were looking into cars, appearing to uh, possibly break into those cars. A deputy arrived at the scene, and the minute he got out of the car, we're told someone fired shots at him. Uh, he called for help, and eventually there was a helicopter involved. They managed to track down two men in that neighborhood who they took into custody. Uh, they believe that those men were uh, involved in the shooting. Uh, the deputy was not wounded, not hit by any of the gunfire, though. And there was a scene that stretched on for about a block uh, where they did find evidence and also talked to witnesses. That includes the gun or one of the guns that they believed was involved in the situation. But again, we're going to get the full story from the sheriff here in just a few minutes. Still waiting for him to step in front of these microphones and uh, give us an update on that situation. Reporting live downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. All right, thank you, Katrina. New this morning, one woman is recovering following a rollover crash on the city's north side last night. It happened just before 1 a.m. off of Loop 1604 near Rogers Ranch. That's where San Antonio police say the woman drove off of that road and rolled her vehicle over. She was taken to the hospital and she is expected to be okay. At this point, officers still do not know what caused her vehicle to veer off the road. Another local story, a woman found dead. Her son accused in the death investigation. 50-year-old Juan Santos Huerta is accused of neglecting his mother who was bedridden. Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar says Huerta was paid to be her provider, but instead worked as a trucker while cashing checks from the health provider company. San Diego's police found 74-year-old Maria Huerta's body in a home near Elmendorf on Saturday. Bear County investigators were then called to help. Huerta faces a charge of injury to the elderly with bodily injury by omission in that case. Several new COVID variants are now being closely monitored by local researchers and the World Health Organization. Some of the variants include Lambda and Mu variants. The good news, a researcher, Gene Patterson with Texas Biomed Research Institute, says there's no evidence that any of them are more dangerous, just potentially more transmissible. There's no evidence that any of these variants are um, have escaped mutants that would suggest that you wouldn't be protected from your vaccination. Right now, scientists uh, say they're still trying to predict best when the pandemic might end. Many health experts are saying the vaccination is uh, vaccine rather still the best tool against the coronavirus. Gonzalez County Sheriff Robert Inclan is set to be laid to rest today after his battle with COVID-19. Visitation is scheduled for noon at the J.B. Wells Expo Center in Gonzalez, Texas. A service will then take place at the center at 2 p.m. The so-called murder hornets are trying to make a comeback in Washington state. According to the State Department of Agriculture, two new sightings have been confirmed in Whatcom County near the border with Canada. That's the same area where murder hornet nests were destroyed back in 2020 and again earlier this year. 
Asian giant hornets are the largest in the world and they earn their nickname murder hornets because they enter a slaughter phase where they kill honeybees by decapitating them. Experts say it is super important to report any sightings up there in the Pacific Northwest. Pilots for American Airlines are set to hit the picket lines. The informational picketing is being planned by the Pilots Union over the next few weeks at several of the airline's major hubs. The pilots are protesting their work schedule, fatigue, and lack of adequate accommodations. Right now, there's no word on how this will affect flights. We are just days away from the 20th anniversary of the 9-11 attacks, and since that dark day, a number of security measures have been implemented here in the United States. ABC's Alex Fraché takes a look at some of those changes that took place over the past two decades. In the 20 years since the 9-11 terror attacks, air travel and security have changed drastically. In fact, before the attacks, there wasn't even TSA. Today, checkpoints and security screenings are the norm. Elizabeth Newman is a national security expert for ABC News. We got better at physically screening you as you came through the airport. We became more agile and adaptable as the threat changed. Like with Richard Reed, just months after 9-11, Reed boarded an American Airlines flight from Paris to Miami with homemade bombs hidden in his shoes. Crew members and passengers noticed him trying to light the fuse and restrained him. Afterwards, we all had to start taking our shoes off to go through security. Limiting and taking out liquids and gels during TSA screenings, that came in 2006 after British police discovered a transatlantic terror plot. Another major change, the creation of no-fly lists. If somebody is on that list, um, they don't even board a plane to come to the United States. There were also highly criticized security tools. The Patriot Act expanded law enforcement surveillance, but also authorized indefinite detention of non-citizens the government deemed a national security threat and gave law enforcement permission to search property and records without a warrant. I would argue it was a necessary evil for the short term. Since its passage in 2001, there have been several legal challenges, courts ruling a number of its provisions unconstitutional. And a key part of the Patriot Act, which allowed for surveillance of telephone records, expired last year. But the big question is, two decades later, with all these changes, are we safer? A recent report from the United Nations shows terror groups ISIS and Al-Qaeda have had growth in Africa. ISIS also finding safe havens in Iraq and Syria. And with the recent collapse of the Afghan government, top U.S. military officials warned the country could become a cradle for terrorism, potential plots stateside or against Americans. Experts telling us a key will be remaining vigilant. So the challenge in the space that we're in post uh, 20 years post 9-11, um, terrorism budgets are on the down, down slope. They're not increasing, they're decreasing. Um, the workload hasn't decreased. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. 638, about 71 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA, the chilling story of a Laredo Border Patrol agent accused of killing several women. And welcome back at 642. He has been called Laredo's first serial killer, a man who wore a badge and who people believe they could trust. Juan David Ortiz was a Border Patrol agent accused of killing four women. And we want to warn you, this story may be disturbing to some of our viewers. Erica Hernandez has details in the latest South Texas crime story. It's 2018 and a killer is on the loose in Laredo. Four lives taken in less than two weeks. And investigators say the suspected murderer is from their own law enforcement family. Arrest documents state 38-year-old Juan David Ortiz, a nine-year Border Patrol agent, confessed to killing three women and a transgender woman. Melissa Ramirez is the first victim reported. Ortiz tells authorities he picked her up in Laredo, drove out of the city limits, and hit her in the back of the head several times by the side of the road. Webb County deputies later find her lifeless body, but she will not be the last victim. The second is Claudine Luera. Ortiz tells investigators he picked her up and then followed a now familiar path, again driving his victim outside the city. Ortiz says Luera accused him of being the last person to see the first victim, Melissa Ramirez, alive. He says he then shot her, striking her several times before leaving her wounded along a road. A truck driver finds her alive, but she later died at a Laredo hospital. The next case also terrifying, but with a different outcome. This time, the woman escapes. The police affidavit says Ortiz picked her up and took her to his house. Investigators say she too is talking about Ramirez's death. Ortiz tells them he got upset and pointed a gun at the woman, but she is able to escape, running from Ortiz's truck and flagging down a DPS trooper for help. 
Investigators went to Ortiz's home to question him, but he was not there. Police found him the next day hiding in a hotel parking garage. Records state Ortiz voluntarily confessed the murders of four people from September 3rd to September 15 when taken in for questioning. Deputies say Ortiz told them after the woman escaped at the gas station, he picked up an unknown woman and shot her. She was Griselda Cantu. After that, Ortiz says he picked up Janelle Ortiz and shot and killed her as well. Although Juan David Ortiz confessed to the crimes, he pleaded not guilty to four counts of murder and one count of assault. A status hearing on his case is expected today in Webb County. For more on this story, head to our website, ksat.com. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Right now, it's 644. Mike's forecast coming up because it's gorgeous outside right now. But for now, let's check traffic. It looks like things are moving and actually starting to pick up a little bit on the roadways. Can traffic be gorgeous? Sure. sure. Okay, let's say traffic's been, a, it's been a gorgeous morning for traffic on the roadways at, except there, uh, some construction off I-10 East at Loop 1604 is the exception, but everything else is looking pretty good right now. As we take a look at trans guys, some of the shots around town do show a pretty gorgeous start on the roadways with traffic moving pretty smoothly so far. As we take a look though, we do have some stalls to talk about. Loop 410 eastbound at Fredericksburg Road with that one still reported over there and seeing another stall reported right here off I-35 southbound at New Braunfels Avenue, although not causing any issues right now. It's been a pretty green start so we can take a look at our gas prices one last time. AAA does report the average gas price is 269 and around the state we're looking at 282. The national gas price average though is 318. Now AAA does also report that Hurricane Ida did have minimal impact on that national average. In fact, uh, that's the same number that we saw last month. However, it's still 96 cents more than a year ago. And again, we're going to continue to watch those gas prices and the roadways as well. Taking one last look at 281 at San Pedro getting a little bit busier there, but I'd say we are off to a very beautiful start on the roads. Oh, yeah. Look at that sunrise, too. Speaking of nice. uh, beautiful, look at that ray of sunshine. Yeah. Yeah. That's a really cool looking picture. <laughs> very nice. Yeah. It's like you need a pot of gold right there or something, or wouldn't it be cool if you could position somebody in that picture right there with those beams around them? Right. Rancho Real out in Lakey. Yeah. Real pretty picture. Thank you so much for the uh, KSAC Connect shot. And uh, we, yeah, oh, wow. Wow, it's one of the prettiest sunrises we've had in a long time. And the nice thing that adds to it is the fact that the air is so dry, not only upstairs in the atmosphere, but down here at the surface. So it just makes it that much more vibrant to look at. And the dew point, measure moisture in the atmosphere we always talk about. This is how you figure out relative humidity. But this is the, the again, the, the kind of the hard and fast numbers. And uh, they're down about 8 you know, six, eight, 10, almost 15 degrees compared to this time yesterday. So much, much drier air is in place. And that's going to remain the situation not only today, tomorrow, Saturday, but then during the day Saturday, the humidity dew point temperatures are going to really come back up. So we're going to feel more humidity by Sunday, but that then is going to help out with some uh, rain chances. Nothing really today, nothing tomorrow, uh, nor on Saturday. But then later in the day on Saturday, we'll start to see some of these rain chances kind of move into the area. Maybe a few of them around throughout the day on Sunday. One or two of these showers, a couple of them by Monday. Obviously, the majority of this rain is going to be off to the east. And then even going on in the middle part of the week, we'll still continue to keep some of these rain chances around here. Of course, it won't be raining constantly, but we'll still have you know, a shot of rain here and there, more clouds, and that is going to help to keep temperatures down. As a matter of fact, temperatures will finally be back down to basically normal levels because right now 92 and then by next week 91 for a normal average high temperature. Obviously, we've been up to 100 the past couple of days and going to be there the next couple of days. That high is controlling things right now, but it's also keeping us in this northerly flow helping to keep uh, kind of drier air in place. So that's the situation today, tomorrow, Saturday. Then by later in the day on Saturday, we start to get more of this flow coming in off the Gulf of Mexico, and that's going to help with the humidity coming up more clouds and we get little disturbances kind of moving on in here and there's a low that's going to try and work its way in and that's going to help out with the rain chances Monday as well as going into the uh, middle part of next week. So it is an encouraging forecast. I mean, yes, hot temperatures the next few days, but low humidity. Then when the humidity comes back, get some rain chances. So that's not too bad. 90 at noon, mostly sunny skies. That's almost already up to the normal average high temperature. And then we top off at 100 today, although low humidity is going to make it feel really comfortable. Same thing tomorrow, Saturday, more humidity Sunday. Yes, the man in the blue tie has a question. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, question. 
Yes, uh, I, I like the forecast here. We earlier reported that the Northeast is about to get hit with more rain. Is that remnants of Mindy or a separate system altogether? Mindy is going to be working its way up into the Atlantic Ocean. It's crossing the southeastern United States uh -huh. and right there, Georgia, uh, South Carolina. And it's probably going to pop back into the Atlantic Ocean and kind of work its way up. So it may kind of hug the coast and give them some more rain up there to the Northeast. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah. But here, 100 degrees. Perfect. Yeah. But <laughs> well, well, low humidity. Yeah. Yep. In Six. time now, it's 649 and 71 degrees for now. The State Board of Education is in the process of updating how climate change is taught in Texas classrooms, but there is a tug of war going on between Democrats and Republicans on that board. Tomorrow on GMSA, Sarah Costa will have more when our forecasting change series continues. Outside with live cam, yeah, 71 degrees at the airport feels even better than that. As San Antonio and South Texas are waking up on a Thursday morning, we will be right back. Two men in custody after shooting at Bear County deputies. Here's a live press conference with Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar. The deputies showed a great deal of restraint. These, these uh, deputies didn't have to fire a single shot to get these two armed, desperate, would-be cop killers into custody. Uh, they also recovered both weapons. And so both suspects are here at the jail. They're not being cooperative, of course. Uh, they're both in their late teens, early 20s, but they're not telling us who they are. And so we'll find out who they are. Right now we're running fingerprints. I'm going to bet my next 10 paychecks that they've got a criminal record. And so uh, we're, we're going to be processing them. We're going to be processing the vehicle for evidence that I think we'll be sending you pictures of it later. A uh, vehicle that was, was hit by what I'm going to call effective gunfire. It was struck at least twice in very close proximity to where the deputy was, once on the door frame. And once I believe on the window or windshield was struck. So it, it's just luck. It's just by God's grace that we're not talking about two dead deputies this morning. Uh, I'm elated at the, at the fact that they're alive. I'm, I'm, I'm elated at the fact that they were able to get these suspects into custody without, without uh, gunfire. Um, it just this, this situation worked out as best to be considered. Considering the fact that there's more weapons on the street is what we've been saying. There's more weapons out there on the street. There's readily available weapons. To these criminals and these criminals are getting more violent they're getting more desperate and if and if i sound a little exasperated by the whole thing it's because i am i it, it's just it's it's it, it baffles my mind that this just continues to happen and and we obviously need to do something about it law enforcement needs more help speaking of weapons did the homeowner use a weapon how was he or she able to fight back against these suspects who were armed? I don't think the I don't think the homeowner had a weapon. Uh, the the homeowner just did a really good job of, of going hand to hand with these dangerous suspects, and again was able to inflict quite a bit of injury on one of the suspects. And so kudos to him uh, for for taking that stand and protecting his home against these desperate suspects. Two questions quickly. Sheriff. Yes, ma'am. One, were the suspects altered on drugs, uh, drinking in any kind of way? And two, how were the deputies able to keep from getting hit, how did they, were they able to protect themselves? Well, uh, you know, the the uh, deputies or the inmates, or the suspects. I'm sorry, I don't know if they're if they were under the influence of drugs. Uh, I I just say they're just especially violent people at this point. Um, drugs or no drugs, and the the deputies, I think, just good ta good sound patrol tactics on the part of these two deputies. One of these deputies is about a one year veteran on patrol. Uh, he's only been on his own. All right, stay with KSAT on air and online for the latest on that breaking story. Let's take one last look at our roadways 281 at San Pedro getting a little bit busier there. Although the morning has been shaping up to be pretty nice on the roads, we still have those stalls right there off I-35 southbound at New Braunfels Avenue. And we want to show you our inbound times one last time because we're seeing some slowdown there on I-35 south coming into this downtown San Antonio and a little bit of a slowdown on Bulverde. But Mike's got your forecast. So what's it looking like? Uh, very beautiful start this morning and very comfortable out there. We are at 68 degrees right right now. Yep, way below normal and uh, it's going to be a hot one, but the humidity is quite low, so it's comfortable out there. 100 for a high. All right, Mike, Stephen, thank you, gentlemen. Yeah, thank you guys for joining us. Have a great day, but we'll see you back here at nine. Good morning, America is coming up next.